Today's gangster profile, the Cambodian gangs of Lowell, Massachusetts. The historic Mill City of Lowell, Massachusetts is the setting for today's video. Lowell, which is aptly nicknamed Mill City, is the fourth largest city in Massachusetts after Boston, Worcester, and Springfield. With its strategic geographical position at the junctions of the mighty Merrimack and Concord Rivers, it was America's first planned industrial town. With an abundance of water power, cotton textile mills began popping up everywhere. By the mid-1800s, Lowell is one of the largest industrial manufacturing hubs in the whole country. First Irish and French Canadian immigrants came to work the mills, and then came Southern and Eastern Europeans, Greeks, Polish, and Lithuanians being the major groups. By the mid-1920s, the height of Lowell's industrial prowess had passed, and after the Depression, Lowell's industrial might continued to steady, steadily dwindle. After decades of decline and urban decay, in 1978, Lowell established the Lowell National Historical Park, commemorating America's first textile mills. This helped preserve the dilapidated mills in the downtown and kept the majority of the downtown area from being bulldozed. At the same time, thousands of Southeast Asians started to immigrate to Lowell. Some were Laotian, but mostly the they were Cambodians fleeing their war-torn homelands. I'm not exactly sure why they came to Lowell. There aren't any other large Asian populations in the area. There was probably just an excess of affordable housing there because by the 1970s, not many people wanted to live in Lowell. More and more Cambodians kept immigrating to Lowell, and by the end of the 1990s, Lowell was one of the most diverse cities in the United States. It has the second highest Cambodian population in the United States, second only to Long Beach, California. By the 1990s, Lowell had developed a bad reputation. HBO made their infamous documentary, High on Crack Street, in Lowell, where boxing legend Mickey Ward's brother, Dickie Eklund, smokes crack on camera and talks about fighting Sugar Ray Leonard. It gave the U.S. and the rest of the world a very bad image of what Lowell Mass was like. If you've never seen this documentary, check it out. It's epic. But unfortunately, this is the way it was. I'm sure there's still plenty of drugs there, but older people I know say that in the 80s and 90s, Lowell, not Lawrence, was ground zero for drugs in New England. For a lot of the adults who had just survived the violence of war and children who had spent childhoods in refugee, refugee camps, it was a step up, but it was still hard. Growing up in a strange land and not knowing the customs, the kids would get picked on at school and on the streets. The parents worked usually multiple jobs for low wages and weren't home often. Apparently, a lot of the kids had trouble communicating with their parents. The parents spoke absolutely no English and the children spoke broken Cambodian. A lot of them had lost their, their Cambodian vocabulary in refugee camps and trying to assimilate into America. The Cambodian kids would regularly get jumped on their way to and from school on the tough Lowell streets. They were sick of getting bullied by different different Spanish gangs in the city, so in the late 80s, the first Cambodian cliques started to form in Lowell, Mass. By the early 1990s, gang culture was spreading across the United States like wildfire. With movies like Colors and Gangster Rap, gang culture was reaching the mainstream. LA gangs like Bloods and Crips were spreading nationally, and most street gangs were claiming blue or red or identifying with some sort of rag. In Lowell, it was no different. The young, predominantly Cambodian and some Laotian teens were forming gangs. One of the first gangs was called the Street Boys. It was kind of a mix of different cliques together. A subset of the Street Boys broke off, calling themselves the Sworn Brothers. Apparently, a lot of Street Boys were becoming to have blood affiliations, so the more Crip-driven Sworn Brothers started their own clique. The Street Boys would go on to add an O to their name, becoming the original Street Boys. And then there was a third set from the original gang, calling themselves the Nature Boys. They started representing with a green rag. This clique didn't want to choose a side between blue and red. With the gang violence in Long Beach, California spinning out of control, a lot of Cambodian gang members from Long Beach were sent to live with their relatives in Lowell, Mass. In Long Beach, the Asian gangs, Tiny Rascals, and Asian Boys were battling with each other, but even more so, they were involved in a long-standing war with the Vario Longos, the Mexican gang that was the largest and most violent in Long Beach, California. When these gang members from California came to the Lowell, they, faced, they found themselves basically in the same situation. It hadn't quite evolved to the way it was in California, but it was quickly heading that way. They brought new influences to the Lowell gang scene. The Asian boys identified as Crips, and they clicked up with the street boys when they came to Lowell. They would team up together to fight the emerging threat that the Tiny Rascals gangs presented. 
Don't let the innocent sounding name fool you. The Tiny Rascals Gang are one of the most dangerous gangs in the United States. The Tiny Rascals originated in Long Beach, California and spread to other California cities where there are a large Southeast Asian population. The gang isn't exclusive to only Asians, but the majority of its members are Southeast Asian heritage. They moved into Lowell, Mass. around 1993 with members relocating to family members that lived in Lowell. TRG has spread all throughout the country, basically wherever there is a Southeast Asian population. They develop strongholds in Philly and Northern Virginia and have sets all up and down the East Coast. Long Beach and Lowell, Mass. are the two cities where TRG are the most dominant. TRG reps with the color gray and assumed there were more and more gray bandanas in the city of Lowell. The members of the Tiny Rascals that came from Eastside Long Beach had been involved in a war with the Eastside Long Ghost Mexican Gang. These TRG members were used to gang violence. Upon arriving in Lowell, they helped contribute to the rising levels of violence in the city. In the early morning hours of December 26, 1993, the day after Christmas, a holiday that matters little to Southeast Asians, a man named Fai Yu was playing pool at a billiards hall called Clyde's in Lowell, which was a gang hangout. Yu was playing pool with his roommates and some friends and wasn't drinking. While he was playing pool, an intoxicated man named Boon Ra Ur was mouthing off at people, saying he wanted to beat up the leader of the Sworn Brothers. Ur was a tiny rascal. He started mouthing off to Yu and his companions, who all happened to be part of the Asian Boys gang. The Asian Boys and the Sworn Brothers were cool, but both gangs were rivals with TRG. All the other gangs usually align themselves against TRG. It's only when all the Asian gangs are facing a strong rival like the Vario Longos do they all get along. Yu informed Ur that they were Asian boys and not sworn brothers. Ur said it didn't matter, that he could beat up anyone from either gang one-on-one. -on -one. A fight broke out in the establishment with about 15 gang members. After the fracas, Yu and his friends were hanging out near the front of Clyde's after the fight, when Ur returned and started talking shit again. Yu apparently had had enough and pulled out a thirty eight revolver and walked up to Ur, shooting him twice in the face. He paused and then shot him twice more in the side of the face, killing him instantly. Just for good measure, he emptied the last two rounds into Ur's neck and shoulder. Fai Yu went to trial for murder, and the prosecution noted that he was heavily involved with the Asian Boys gang in Long Beach, California, and he only came to Lowell Mass because he stabbed a rival gang member and was trying to evade the heat. He was seen as influencing the growing Lowell Asian gang culture. Law enforcement officers didn't like to see gangs like the Asian Boys and the Tiny Rascals coming from California and becoming more entrenched in Lowell. This murder helped escalate the violence in Lowell's gangland, where there used to be fistfights and stabbings. Now shootings were becoming more regular. Throughout the years, the Cambodian gangs of Lowell had become more entrenched and now are more hard to eliminate. The Cambodian residents of Lowell live in an insular world that's hard to break into by outsiders. Many Asian gangsters from California and all over the United States end up in Lowell, trying to evade law enforcement and blend in with Lowell's large Southeast Asian population. This unfortunately negatively influences Lowell's gang culture and also brings conflicts from all over the country to the city. Southeast Asian gangs have a habit of changing and merging with other gangs, and their gang members of well often change alliances. Gang members who may have been bloods previously now join newly formed gangs that perhaps don't represent with a red rag. It makes it harder for law enforcement to keep track and know what's going on. Over the years, the Lowell Police have worked with numerous federal agencies to help combat these dangerous and fluid Asian gangs. In late 2018 and early 2019, violence in Lowell started to explode. In a short period of time, there was over 12 separate shootings and a couple homicides. Going into the summer of 2019, which usually sees a natural increase in gang violence, Lowell's chief of police contacted the FBI for help. Knowing that the violence most likely stemmed from the incredibly lucrative drug trade, they also included the DEA. In 2021, 15 members of the One Family Clique, or OFC, were arrested by federal authorities after they unraveled a gigantic drug trafficking operation. Not only was the OFC dealing drugs on the streets of Lowell, but they were shipping it all over the United States with the U.S. Postal Service. They were trafficking everything from fentanyl, meth, coke, MDMA, pills, and marijuana. They are also charged with numerous weapon charges and acts of violence. The gang's founder, Sarath Ute, was a former blood originally from California and was arrested and charged as the leader of the gang in the indictment. It was stated that the escalation of the gang violence in Lowell was a result of the OFC taking over the drug game in Lowell and taking over other gangs' turf. 
The gang had an impressive arsenal purchased with their drug proceeds. The gang was also operating a pretty slick operation, netting millions in the sales of narcotics. They had connections nationally and internationally, and were involved in sophisticated money laundering schemes. The case pretty much took the majority of the gang's major players off the streets of Lowell. Even with the big federal case against the one family clique, Lowell's gang problem isn't going anywhere. After almost four decades, the gang problem seems unsurmountable at this point in Lowell. I love Lowell. It's a great old city. There's tons of history there. There's museums. It's fun just to walk downtown and look at the cool old buildings. I've been going there since I was a kid with my father. He used to bring me to this Greek festival there. Even though Cambodians make up roughly one-third of Lowell's population, they almost live like a separate community. In total, the city deals with problems of poverty, unemployment, family life, and other social issues. The gang problem will persist. Cambodian children who make up more than a quarter of Lowell students have poor educational statistics. Only one-fifth of Cambodian students graduate high school and only one-tenth of Cambodian students graduate college. This is part of a bigger problem that keeps young Southeast Asian youth falling into the dead-end life of a gang member. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from people who live in Lowell and have intimate knowledge of, or stories. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I need some new subscribers. I'll have a new video coming out on Wednesday. That's the schedule now, Wednesday and Saturday. Until next time, folks, take good care of yourselves and have a great day.